Monport was nice enough to send over this 50 watt fiber laser setup, and in this video I'm going to check it out and show you what it can do. And this whole unit shows up in a crate with some assembly required. So if you are getting one of these, keep that in mind. And it looks like it's pretty decently packed, but it's just a bunch of random assortments of foam. But here's all the parts out of the crate. And as you can tell, this is a pretty industrial setup, and it's mostly made out of pretty thick aluminum. It also has this bag that's full of stuff as well. And here's everything out of the bag. I like this little foot control that can restart cuts, which comes in really handy if you're doing the same thing over and over again. It does come with a power cord with this weird part that goes into the machine itself. It also comes with a monitor mount if you wanted to set it up that way, which I'm not going to be doing, I'll just be using a laptop. There's also this little tape measure so you can figure out your focus, along with some safety glasses. And it comes with a USB drive with all the software you need to run this thing on it. They also sent this rotary tool with this, so you can set this up and engrave on round objects, like the inside of rings or the outside of rings. And getting this thing set up is pretty straightforward. It's only four bolts that attach this upright to the base, and then it's just four more bolts that attach this top end to it. And the top of this is the part that actually has the lens that focuses your laser, along with the little mirrors that move it around. And this whole thing works by shooting a laser through a fiber optic cable. And then this is directed around with two little mirrors, and then focused through a lens. And using this system, makes the laser engraving really fast as well. So with it all set up, now we just need to turn it on, and each thing needs to be powered on one at a time, with these three different buttons. And you might have noticed I installed the monitor mount, and I only did this to show where it would go, and you can see where your monitor would actually be. This also has a pretty large work area, at about 300 by 300 millimeters, or 12 by 12 inches. And this can change depending on what lens you're using, but I'll talk about that more later. And this does have a button on the top that turns on two lasers, and this will help you adjust the focus of the laser. And you do that by turning this to raise and lower it. And you just want to move this until both the laser points come together, and this should get you pretty close to being in focus. But if you want to make sure you have a perfect focus every time, you're going to want some of these metal business cards. And I just made a 25mm square in the software, and set it to fill. And as this is going, I'm going to be adjusting this up and down, and you're basically just adjusting this to see where it's the brightest, and actually taking the material away. You also should be able to hear it making a lot more noise, but with this large of a lens, you really can't. But anyways, once you find the sweet spot for the laser, you're going to need to take some measurements. So you just need to measure from the bottom of the lens to the card. And now that you have that measurement, you can cut something that is exactly this length and use it to make sure that you're going to be in focus every time. And I was able to use one of my other lasers to cut out a perfect template for this. And sadly, these measurements are going to be different for every laser and every lens. And I put the lens info on this one so I know which one it goes to. So let's try this out on the metal part of this flash drive. And when it comes to the software to run this, it comes with something called EasyCAD, which is a free program that comes on the USB drive. And this software is more than enough for most things. But I'm using a paid software called Lightburn, which has a lot more handy features and is a little more user friendly. It's also nice being able to frame out your design to see exactly where it's going to be. And it looks like it was able to engrave into this with no problem. But you're not limited to just doing text. You can also just import images into this and it'll turn them into grayscale. But like with anything, you're going to have to figure out what settings to use for your materials to get the best results. And this is going to be trial and error, of course. But once you have everything dialed in, you can get some amazing results. And I've even made some YouTube shorts showing off some of these designs. And if you're using this on stainless steel, you can actually use this to make colors on it. And this will come in really handy for making logos or making custom jewelry. And you can see that this setup takes up a bit of space. So before I continue with this, I'm going to set it up a little different. So I'm going to use this steel service cart, along with this folding tray. So with this setup, it'll make it completely mobile. So I can put this away when I'm not using it. And it also has a smaller footprint. And here's everything all set up on it, with the main laser unit underneath everything. And you definitely don't have to do this. But it's a pretty good option if you're limited on space. This laser is also able to mark on plastics. And it gives them a very professional and clean look. And this is actually a 3D printed part, so it's something that you wouldn't be able to do normally with the printer, all on its own. And this is what that design looks like inside of the software. And making this in Lightburn was actually pretty easy, and that's mostly because I can import an image like this one, and have the software trace this, so now I have completely clean lines that I can resize without losing any resolution or anything like that. And this laser is supposed to be able to mark on copper, but as you can see, this isn't really doing anything to this copper sheet. And this is due to the large lens that we're using on this right now. So I'm going to switch out the lens to one that has a work area of only 70 by 70 millimeters. And swapping out the lens is pretty easy, just unscrew it, and then just screw in the one that you want to use. So for the larger lens, this is the focus distance, but when it comes to the smaller one, this is the focal distance. So definitely a big difference. As you can see here, it's a lot closer now. You can even see and hear that it's a bit stronger now.
and now it has no problem at all marking on the copper. And I even did a material test so you can see what settings do what on this, which I highly suggest doing to all the materials you're going to be working with. So if I wanted to make a custom design for a ring really quick, I can engrave on the outside of a ring blank and then just round it into a ring. And if your ring is already, well, ring shaped, you can always use the rotary system on this. Or if you want to do something a little bit bigger, you can do tumblers. But if you're making custom flat pieces of jewelry, this makes really quick work of it all. And you can get some really fine details out of this. And it's nice how easy it is to move around your designs and resize them as you need, as you're able to see the outline of it. And you can definitely do some pretty small stuff as well. And as you can see, this only takes a few seconds to finish. And of course, this works on the precious metals like silver, gold, and platinum. And I'm really just kind of scratching the surface on what you could do with one of these lasers. And there's enough to go over to make an entire channel just about this, which I am definitely not interested in doing. But if you do have any questions or if you're interested in seeing something, let me know and I might be able to make a short about it or a full length video. It just depends what it is. And if you're wondering about the lifespan of one of these lasers, it's about 100,000 hours, which is pretty good, especially since the machine that I have here is $4,300. And they do have lower power options for a bit less, but none of them are exactly cheap as you can see. So if you are getting one of these, make sure you actually have a purpose for it. And as of recording this, I found out that they just released some new fiber lasers that are more compact and cheaper. So you definitely have a lot more options now. Well, I think that's about it for this video, and I'll definitely be using this later in projects and future videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.